Hey guys, it's Kelly, and today I am so excited to bring you a 2021 Audi Q7 tour. If this is your first time checking out my channel, my name's Kelly, and I am the car mom. I review cars from a mom's perspective, and today we're diving into the Audi. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below about which car I should tour next. Let's get started. Okay, taking a look at the front end, there is kind of a lot going on, I'm not gonna lie. We've got like a grill here, some chrome here. The headlights are complicated. There's some like trim down there as well. Not my favorite front end, but I overall do really like the body style. I have not spent a lot of time in a Q7, so I'm very excited to see how the car situation works. Um, the Atlas is one of my favorite cars on the market in Volkswagen phones Audi, so I'm hoping that some of those elements have translated into the Q7. Okay, taking a look at the front end, there is kind of a lot going on, I'm not gonna lie. We've got like a grill here, some chrome here. The headlights are complicated. There's some like trim down there as well. Not my favorite front end, but I overall do really like the body style. I have not spent a lot of time in a Q7, so I'm very excited to see how the car situation works. Um, the Atlas is one of my favorite cars on the market in Volkswagen phones Audi, so I'm hoping that some of those elements have translated into the Q7. Looking into this exterior of the car, um, I really do think it's a nice looking car. It's definitely not huge. I wouldn't peg it for a third row standard car, so I'm definitely anxious to check out the third row because it looks a little bit tight. The, the Q7 got redesigned for 2020. I really like the updates they've made. They have this taillight element that is actually so pretty. And when I hit the lock button, or the unlock button, I don't know if it's picking up on camera. You can see how that like light kind of goes through the tail light. I think that's super cute. That's so fun. I love the Audi um, emblem right here. I think that looks great. We're doing a space gray color today, which I think is beautiful. Coming around to the side, we have some nice chrome all over the car. We have chrome that goes all the way around the windows, a chrome roof rail, some chrome elements at the bottom. This specific one is the Quattro, so that means the four wheel drive. Action. What does that smell? It smells like dog food. It's cane. It's what? It smells like cane. Oh, should we get canes? Is, are you filming? Okay, so let's talk about my comfort from the driver's perspective. So, seats are really comfortable. It's kind of a sports style seat, so I, it is kind of hugging me nicely. I've got some power seats, some good lumbar support, memory seats as well. Steering wheel feels pretty good in my hands. It's a little bit thinner than some of the other sports steering wheels I've seen, so I was kind of surprised to see that. As far as my visibility is concerned, it's actually a lot better than I was expecting. I thought because of kind of the sloped roof that the Audi Q7 has, I was it was going to affect my visibility, but really the windshield's big, the windows are big, and I can actually see pretty well in this car. Taking a look at my side cubby, they keep it pretty basic on the interior. Um, it's kind of reminded me of the Volkswagen a little bit. It's not overly luxurious. This is kind of like a, it's like plastic, but it's meant to look like leather. I actually kind of like that. I think it's especially helpful for messy children. They've got just a gloss, like faux, a gloss trim. Uh, the side cubby is actually pretty deep, but this is a seven passenger car, so I kind of was expecting that. This is just like a basic size water bottle. So as you can see, it fits with plenty of room to spare. I also like that we can open our trunk from this door, and it comes with a Bang & Olufsen sound system, which is one of the best sound systems out there. So if you want to be jamming, this is the car to jam in. Okay, before we get any further, I want to talk about price for a second. The Q7 starts at 59. The one we're doing today with options is up to 65.7. Make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video though, because I'm actually going to build my own Q7 and talk through the different trim levels, the colors, the options, and basically tell you which one I think is worth the most bang for your buck. So moving on into the interior. Um, I actually really like it so far. It's very updated. It feels very 2021, unlike some of the other cars I've reviewed. Everything is digital. We have a digital dash and then a dual screen thing. So I haven't loved like the dual screen in times past, but I actually do think this one is very user friendly. I appreciate that this is just your climate control and some other like hot buttons, like your hill descent. Um, that's like your garage door opener. So I like that the climate control is super easy to find. Up here is more of your infotainment system. And really, I do like how it's set up. I think it's very user-friendly. I've been playing with it for a while. I like the infotainment system. Moving down from here, we have our stop-start button, our 
backup camera so we have a backup camera we have a surround view camera and we also have a 3d option so you can literally like see where you are so like we're just in the middle of a parking lot okay so let's chat about the cup holders for a second this again a basic water bottle don't know the brand need to find a brand to sponsor me but it's nothing crazy the cup hold they barely fit in the cup holders like to the point where like i have to like grab it to pull it out so i wish the cup holders were a little bit bigger because the cup holders in my atlas are seriously some of the best um, and there's only two there is a cute little compartment this is the key and there's a cute little compartment to put your key which i think is nice except i would just keep mine in my diaper bag 90 percent of the time okay i'm shocked shocked i brought my size 5 diaper to show you how big the center council is don't think we're gonna need it because look at the center council that's it you can charge your phone you can keep a couple you can keep a lip gloss and a quarter that's all you can put up here there's two usb c's in here i'm shocked and i like how you can like move this to give you kind of an extra cubby there but that's shocking i need more cubby space than that i'm a mom where am i supposed to put all my things Okay, I wanted to show you kind of just like a fun little feature in the Q7. So it has a built-in navigation system. Um, if you want to use a navigation system, it's actually super cool to use. So I'm just going to say where I want to go. And then it gives me the option to type it in down here. So that's kind of where you're using the dual screen. But if I hit this little button... So I've seen other cars that have had this where you can type a letter at a time and it will populate the address. But in this car, I could literally write... like the exact address I want to go. E C A R M O M. And it's like that place does not exist. But I think that's pretty cool and actually a really easy way to add the navigation. And I just like that it's a drawing pad. I think it's cute. You're bored in the pickup line, you get your kid up here and you let them draw on it. Everyone's winning. So I thought that was kind of a cool feature just to mention. Okay, guys, this is kind of cool. So the, the Audi Q7 is something called a welcome sound. So whenever you get into your car, it'll play this for you. Listen to it, listen to it. How relaxing is that? As far as the interior design is concerned, again, they keep it simple, but I really like it. I like all of this slit, this sleek black high gloss that goes across it. I really enjoy the Quattro badging again. And then these vents that I've seen in quite a few cars recently, I just think it really gives it a nice clean look. I really like how I feel in the seat. It's giving me that cockpit sensation of like, is that a weird thing to say, cockpit sensation? Well, now that you say it like that, yeah. <laughs> I really like how I feel in the seats. I'm liking the technology. I've got good visibility. We're here to talk about car seats and that's what we're going to do. So let's get in the second row. Horn check. Sounds pretty basic. Okay, here is a shot of me in the second row. I have this seat set for myself and I'm really tall, about six feet tall. And I've got so much leg room, like almost more than I know what to do with. As far as my second row amenities go, I don't have ceiling vents, but I have vents here on the side and on the bottom. So if you do have kids that are rear facing and you're worried about airflow, I do think these side vents really help just to circulate air throughout the car. So I do like that. It's got like a little net back pocket. Seems kind of lame right there. Uh, and then I've got climate control back here as well. My side cubbies in the second row are actually really good. They're very deep. I think they're just about as good as the ones on the front. And then I've got literally, I don't even know what that's for. Like it's like, I for think, cigarettes. I think, yeah, I think it's an ashtray. Okay. A Cheerio holder for all of us mothers out there. <laughs> uh, no sunshades on this one either. Okay, so I'm about to install my car seats in here to give you an idea, but I wanted to show you how cool this is. So these actually completely pop off, which is awesome because if you don't have a car seat here, you don't have these things poking in your back. And look at how easy it will be to install my car seats. The anchors could not be more exposed. I love that. However, I do want to warn you, if you get this car, and you have kids you have to take these out and you have to remember where they are because it can hurt your trading value if you don't have these so put them somewhere safe okay okay yeah, i'm in it okay we got the car seats installed I want to talk about the Audi Q7 car seat setup because it's freaking awesome is what it is. So the Audi Q7 is third row standard and only comes in a bench. So it's always a seven passenger car. In the third row, three sets of lower anchors, 
three tether anchors. In the third row, two sets of lower anchors, two sets of tether anchors. So that, mean, that means every seat has lower anchors and tether anchors. So it gives you so many options and so much flexibility as far as the car seat setup is concerned. As you can see, I'm in the second row. My brother is sitting in this seat. My brother is 6'6", and I still have plenty of leg room. This is an Up Baby Mesa that I have installed with the latch. This is a Clack Foom that I have installed with the seat belt. And I have a ton of room. So a lot of three across options you could have here. As far as the third row and car seats are concerned, I do think it would be very tight, especially for rear-facing seats. Borderline probably impossible, unless you were to have these seats move up. Another thing that I really like about the Q7 is actually all of these seats are on their own, um, what would you call that? Like set of, what is that called? Tracks. Tracks, thank you. So that means like if I just wanted to give that person more room but didn't want to move the seat up anymore, I could move this up and then we have a little bit more room for a car seat installation or for a third row passenger. So just a lot of flexibility in this car and I'm just really impressed with how well designed it is for car seats. Okay, so one weird thing is we're trying to play with the third row and it doesn't lift more than this. So that's the only option I have, is to fold it forward and then I can move it up a little bit. This third row is really tight, guys. Can you get a shot of this before I even hop back there? And I have this seat moved all the way up. I'm gonna move the middle seat up all the way too. Okay, now I'm hopping back there. Oh gosh. Push. Oh, there it is. Okay, we figured it out. You have to push this and then it lifts up. And so then that's how they could access the third row. So better, but I mean, it's so tight guys. Okay, I'm in the third row. It's not absolutely positively horrible, but I do have these seats moved up as far as they can go. It's not comfortable though. There's not a great way to access it. I do have a cup holder back here. No USBs, no uh, vents. And yeah, I mean, it's a two seater back here. So it's, it's tight, it's tight. And then to get out of the third row, I have to hold this down and then doing this one handed, I can push that. Ugh, that's not, that's not easy. That would be hard for a child. If you have a child back here, that would be difficult. So I forgot my stroller, I'm so sorry, but I can already tell you that I don't think the Vista might fit. I'm sorry guys, I don't have my stroller. I forgot it. I did bring a box of size five diapers from Target to give you an idea of the space. So it could fit like two boxes of size five diapers, if that helps. And then obviously if we put the third row down, which is very easy to do. Um, it's Here's what I don't love though. You have to hold the button the whole time. And like, I'm a busy mother. And again, that kills me. Why would I ever put the seat halfway down? You kill me. Just make it automatic. So anyway, if we take those seats down, we have a lot of room. So really great trunk size, really great trunk size without the third row. And okay trunk size with the third row up. We also have nothing. Okay guys, so just kind of heading back to the dealership. We've been driving the car for a minute. Um, it drives great. It, I mean, it is a 3.0 liter six cylinder. It's very zippy, very zippy. It handles great. I love it. I love how it drives. One of my favorite driving cars I've driven. One of my favorite driving cars I've driven. And the infotainment system is really growing on me. I was so scared I wasn't gonna like this double screen, but it's very user-friendly. It, it really is. Everything makes sense. It's very intuitive. The zip's great. It handles great. The, the braking's good. I, I'm i impressed. If it's, on, if it's on your list, definitely go check it out. So that is going to wrap up my Audi Q7 tour. Overall, I really, I like the car, I really do. I mean, there's definitely some things I don't love, like the size of the center console, the cup holders, and that third row access, and just the size of the third row. But the car seat setup in this car is some of the, one of the best car seat setups I've ever seen. I really do like it, especially for the size of this car. By far the best bench. Tied with the Atlas, which is kind of what I expected as far as the car seat setup is concerned. Well done, Audi, on that. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you head to my Instagram at the car mom because I do a lot more car related content there, including car buying tips. I show videos of used cars, and you can just follow me around on my crazy live as a 202 mom. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means so much. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks. 
Okay, everyone, let's build my very own 2020 Audi Q7. Is it Audi or Audi? I say Audi. Comment below with what you say. Anyway, I um, have gone through the different trim levels. I'm really shocked to set, just to see like the price differences in these cars. So the premium starts at 54.9. The prestige is all the way at 72. Starts at 72,000. The difference between the premium and the premium plus is not that different. So we're looking at like less than three thousand dollars for the upgraded sound system, the surround view camera, a wireless charger, heated steering wheel, illuminated door sills. So like I'm gonna go for it. I'm just feeling it. So I am gonna go up to the premium plus. I do think some of these things are, you know, like power closing doors are really nice and an adaptive suspension makes the car drive a lot nicer. And then of course ambient lighting is cool, but to me it's not worth the, you know, 12th no how much is that the a lot more so anyway let's go to the exterior colors was actually pleasantly surprised with all of the options sometimes these german cars um don't always have a lot of fun colors so i was excited about this blue obviously i thought it was carmon blue but it's a little bit too teal for my preference and then this one is too like royal blue for my preference so i don't actually love either of the blues i like want to select this beige because i think it's so pretty but i just can't tell like what it would look like in person. So, because like, is it too gold? I don't know. And then this brown was kind of speaking to me too. What is wrong with me? I don't know. I'm going to keep it simple. You know what? I'm going to go for the, I'm going to go for the metallic. I think it looks really cool. I don't know. Am I crazy? Anyway, I was impressed with the color options. Moving on to the interior. Again, there's some nice, um, Four different options. There's kind of like a metro, it's called metro gray. I like a gray interior. I think it kind of gives you, you know, that lighter interior look without some of the stress of a light interior car. I also really like the saddle. And then I think the beige is nice too. I also like that it says like what the colors are. So it's like seats are this color, the dashboard's black, the carpet's black, the headliner's the silver. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to do... That would look silly with the uh, cream exterior. So I'm going to just do like light on. No, you know what? I'm going to do black on cream. Yeah, that looks nice. And then just two different um, wood grain options. There's like a fine grain ash and then a high gloss. I'm going to go for the high gloss. Sorry, I'm changing my mind in my invis my imaginary car. Okay, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And I did this once already. What's wrong with me? Okay, moving on to some packages and options. So there are some additional packages you can get. I want this executive package. I think the four zone climate control is important. I like the rear sunshades. I like the ventilated seats. Um, but what really sold me was the active lane assist with emergency assist and the adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist. So to me, I need that. We're getting up there. Um, I'm not going to get the matrix design LED headlights. And then this kills me rear passenger side airbags. Like, yeah, it's not on there. I thought that was bizarre. Um, not going to get, not going to get the upgraded wheels, not going to get any of this stuff. So that actually brings me, Oh, I like the exterior. Do you guys like it? That brings me to my 2021 Q7. So that brings my MSRP to 62 to 90. Um, which I think is the price you have to pay to get just the safety features. I think that that should come on the car. So it definitely gets a lot more expensive, but you know, it's a luxury vehicle. So anyway, that's my Q7. Thanks.